A year ago to date, we sat down with Clay Entertainment's Don't Starve Together roadmap for 2019, everyone, with but one goal in mind as well, to review both the character reworks and releases while further discussing the major content updates between them as we went along. And did we accomplish as such? Heck yeah, we did. Quite well, I'd say, too. From the very first rework in Winona to Wirt's new release, we dove headfirst into how these new and refreshed survivors would eventually find their place on the team, and how fitting their changes even were to begin with. Not only that though, we also took the time to dive into the four major Return of Them content drops too, and found ourselves a mixed bag there I believe. That said however, nothing could stop us from simply gushing over all the lunar content and what else is new right? It was challenging, tiring, but a whole heck of a lot of fun to look back at an entire year of just overflowing releases, and I want to do it again. So. Let's bloody do it. Only, you know, 2020 style. And I get how terrible that sounds, considering such a terrible year in retrospect. However, if there was one saving grace of these past 365 days, it was the continued love shown to Don't Starve Together by Clay themselves. And it all started on February 7th, 2020 with a brand new roadmap for the game. And as we did in 2019, a discussion was had between yours truly and yourselves about what was shown and teased throughout the post, so if you would like to see how wrong or right we were, then go for it. That said, however, there was one thing, one update tease, that no one could have mistaken. Wendy's rework. An early tease within the post not only gave us an idea of Clay's scope when it came to character updates in this year, both new and refresh, mind you, but also left us with an image of a house on a hill. And from that point on, the community was in an excited fury of speculation and or perhaps some concern, as Wendy was looking to be a tough one to crack when it came as to what to change. But no matter what your thoughts were, you didn't actually have to dwell on them long. As just a few weeks later, it was here. The Wendy character refresh and or rework as I have continuously called them over the years. But it was released on March 19th, 2020. And yes, if you've been following along and jotting down some potential history points that come from this year of ours, March was the month when COVID-19 changed most everything, really. So this meant that Clay Entertainment was now working remotely. And while many, including myself, were expecting that this to mean a major halt to the flow of content that the game would see throughout the year, we can actually sit here today and almost laugh at that. Because my goodness gracious, Clay delivered countless amounts of content in 2020 20, and they deserve a ton of credit, love, applause, and rest for doing so. But back to business here, folks. Wendy's rework. New mechanics, new skins, and oh yeah, a new cinematic. Let's discuss. And I find these cinematics to be some of, if not the best work that Clay and their teams do every now and then, so I personally am not going to show much of them. Why? Because I believe you should all view them for yourselves. But the Wish You Were Here animation was a gut puncher. That's for certain. And I mean that in a good, sad way. And to those who have seen it for yourself, I think you understand what I mean by that. But we got to see Wendy, Jack Carter, aka the twins father, aka Maxwell's brother, and even Abigail herself all in one. It was quick, emotional, and establishing. And what could be better than that? So give it a watch when you get the chance. So, the Wendy rework. What did I think of it? Both its initial release and then its second try like a week later. Because <laughs> it was one of those moments where a character rework took a couple attempts, folks. But uh, in short, 50-50. 50-50 for two reasons. Uh, the good parts are is that Wendy and Abigail are still very much Wendy and Abigail, right? The second part is, I still till this day think that they missed the mark on some of those buffs that they added. I absolutely enjoy the fact that they are both the absolute queen still of slaughtering small to medium mobs. I do enjoy the upgrade mechanic of Abigail now. How she, you know, spawns in, a day later she gets more health, another day later she gets more health. I love the fact that we can summon her immediately 
when we choose to, and then summon her back to us in the same way. And I just enjoy the fact that they did kind of revert back to the usual of time of day affecting damages. However, I would have maybe liked to see the original and their new take on it, which was Wendy's health impacting her damage, kind of mixed together, but that didn't happen. But that's the 50 side of things that I did like. Now the other side of the coin, the 50 side that I don't necessarily like, but I can still just take or leave regardless, are the buff potions. We have two healers, two things related to shields, one that increases her movement speed, which really doesn't matter. It also increases our movement speed, if you didn't know, when we're ghosts. And then uh, one that makes it so she deals nighttime damage at any time of the day. That one's great. The other ones, yeah, okay, yeah, they're basic, I get it. But did we really need two of each? I don't think so. I think we could have had a little more fun with those, kind of expanded a little more, and it would have been way better. Way better. We did not need two healing potions and two shield potions. And about those shield potions, they also don't matter. Because their shield only lasts 0.5 seconds without them. With them, they last one freaking second. <laughs> yeah, that shield, that shield definitely needed another look at, and I think these potions did too. But yes, the Wendy rework as a whole. How did I really feel about the rest of it? I enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. I love the pit spooks. I love the mini quests that they take us on. I like the morning glory and how it influences her ecto herbology tab. And yeah, I get it. I'm one of those people too that says, oh, here we go. Another character crafting tab. But it works and you have to appreciate that. And I really do think a lot of people saw all that coming. I think with the Wendy rework, very early on in the new year, people were on top of the predictions. We were saying buffs. We were saying buffs. That said, with this next one, I don't think anyone predicted these next two guys coming. Walter and Wabi. The Constance 2. New companions, everyone. And unless I'm misremembering, I really don't recall much of a tease at all beyond the usual post that Clay drops randomly a week before the release. But yes, Walter just sort of came out of nowhere, and a new character on the horizon certainly lit a fire under our butt at that time. Our speculation ran rampant up until his official release on June 15th, 2020. And it only fueled even more discussion about the potential ins and outs of a scout character soon to be joining the fray. Some of which stuck pretty well, while plenty of it did not. Be that as it may, Walter and Wabi were here, and by golly, they were free to boot. The one and only new character of Don't Starve Together in 2020 was looking to change the game in more ways than one. And it all began with his very own cinematic constant companion. Let's give it a brief look, shall we? Because one of these days, I would actually like to possibly return to many of these cinematics, both character related and beyond, to perhaps slow things down and pick them apart. But that's a discussion for another time. For now, Walter's animation gave us Woody lore without even having Woody remotely involved, and that was just awesome. A Voxola radio, potentially the real axe that personified Lucy before Woody entered the constant himself, and much more, all in but the first 20 dang seconds of the cinematic. It was great stuff. And then things continue on with the introduction of Wabi, who is apparently already in the constant and owned by someone unknown, which is a whole thing too. Walter being that fearless kid that we all know and love now, and even a visit from our good old friend, Dear Clops. Fun stuff, so go see it for yourself. Hmm, Walter, Walter, Walter. What did I think of you then? How well do you still mesh with characters now? And was I a bit too harsh on you back in the day? And do you hold up better now than how I viewed you before? I don't know. Let's discuss. And let me preface this by saying, I think he's a totally fine character, folks. I get why he's in the game, I get how to play him, and I get that his playstyle is actually genuinely different, and it's very fun to do so if you know how to do it and you put yourself into it. That's fantastic. He is a fantastic character, always has been. I have never once doubted that, nor have I ever wanted to say otherwise. My only gripe was always how he fit his theme. And his theme is obvious. He's a Boy Scout, right? Right. So why does he only really have three, three perks to him that fit that theme? His slingshot and everything that comes with it. The fact that he loves being around trees and will gain sanity near them. <laughs> I bet you people don't even remember that. 
And then maybe I guess you can pseudo throw in the whole tent, portable tent thing. That's kind of cool. We'll put those two together. And then three, of course, Wobbies with them so we can scout better than others. Fantastic, right? Right. However, I believe, and this is okay, mind you, that people were just expecting more. And no, I, I don't mean more as in grand, as in a grand character build. I just believe people were really, really wanting a full-blown scout character, right? Not just a character with a lot of random perks. Let's be honest here. He spawns in with the Chester. Spawns in with the slingshot. He has the tree thing that we were just talking about. The sanity thing that when he gets hit and all that, it's related to sanity and that just kind of comes out of nowhere apart from his name, which is also just objective. They could have named him anything. The fearless, the scout, you name it. You know what I mean? So that was also tacked on. Just a lot of random, right? And random works. Random works. Again, I could take Walter right now and go play it and have fun. It's just... People wanted a scout, and they didn't get it. Heck, you can even see a compass, a flashlight, a map in his own cinematic. Why don't we just work with that? I don't know, but it's, you know, <laughs> too late now. But let's stick on that combat for one final note here, folks, because it's going to relate to the next girl coming up as well. But Walter's combat, great. Absolutely great. He's not the first range character in the Don't Stop universe, though. Wheeler is. So I'm surprised we didn't see some of her mechanics come to Walter. Like how we can just fire anything out of a slingshot. That's kind of the whole point of a slingshot. <laughs> in real life, if you've ever had one, you know you're flinging everything left and right. But that's okay. That's okay. You can still have some fun with trinkets. The ammo types are fantastic. Uh, heck, you get yourself set up with Marvel pretty quickly. You're off to the bloody races. Walter is fantastic. He's fun. The combat he provides to the game is different. It's one of the things, biggest things, that I was really hoping to come from the character. And it came. So I am more than satisfied with that. But... With that, get your earplugs ready, folks, because this next one gonna be a doozy. Well, not really, actually, but it will be a quick discussion for sure, folks. Why? Well, because Wigfrid's rework wasn't really a rework. It was more of an add-on content update than anything else for the most part. They truly didn't change much of anything at the end of the day, even though we, and many others, were off to the bloody races with talking about them doing just the opposite of that. But don't get me wrong here either. What they did was totally fine by me, I think. Albeit the changes they did actually make were not even close to the best part of the update itself on September 24th, 2020. But beer the heck you want about? Well, just hear me out here. For you see, the Curtain Calls animated short dropped right alongside Wigfrid's refresh. And I know that I say this nearly every dang time in other cinematic releases, but it was definitely one of their best yet, folks. We talked about it at length many moons ago, so I will not keep you here long now. But please do yourself a favor and watch the breakdown if you are indeed interested in Don't Starve lore because it's a good one. Probably the most important one we've had in years. But now, Wigfrid's refresh as a whole, everyone. Was it actually enough? What could it have been? And are these songs even in use at this point? I don't know. Let's find out. If there's one thing to be learned from all this, it's that when we speculate and you speculate together with us, we come up with some grand ideas, sometimes a little too wild. And with Wigfrid, we kind of were going in on it for sure. Not that much, though. We were thinking new weapons, maybe a shield and buffs, right? To kind of spruce up the combat a little bit. Maybe even some combat abilities thrown in just because of it. That's what we were thinking, right? And uh, I don't know. I didn't really think that was that out there. But what we got were buffs, yes, but the way they were implemented, still kind of up for debate, I feel. For one thing, half those songs don't even matter. Truly, don't even matter. Why? Because if you're playing as Wigfrid and you're going to be using those buffs that are meant for group play, the group that you're in, even if it's a small group, is going to absolutely slaughter anything you come up against before you even have a chance to use any of those buffs to their utmost effectiveness, right? That was always the problem. She was made for group play, but then she negates group play or gets negated by group play rather. You know what I mean? So there's that. And then one of those songs you're never going to use in your life because you're never going to get what's needed to actually make it. That being the fire one. And then there's the whole inspiration thing itself. It's a fine mechanic, I suppose. It fits with what they were going. Duh. But 
It drains way too quickly, you know? It drains way too quickly. Maybe it shouldn't have. Maybe you should just be able to build it and use it when you want. I don't know. But that drain was bad, is bad, and unfortunately, might remain bad. I will say this, her startling soliloquy, holy moly, that thing is phenomenal. <laughs> that thing is so good. If you know how to use it, you can just permanently stun Claws, Bee Queen, a bunch of other stuff. We tested it, and wow, it was even better than I thought. So if you want to find that, go watch the video. But all in all, this might sound strange considering how I just kind of ragged on it a little bit. It was fine. Again, because it wasn't a rework. <laughs> Wigfrid is still 100% Wigfrid. She still has her damage thing. She still only eats meat. And she has her gear. Right? Right. Probably the best thing to come out of the rework, as I said, was her cinematic. And then those new blue Viking skins. Holy crap. Those things are beautiful. But as a whole, this is by far, I won't say the worst, the Know what? I am going to say it. This is probably the worst rework they've done because it's not a rework. So take us that as you please. But let's get some final thoughts here, folks. And these are going to be some pretty random final thoughts, I think. Wickerbottom and Wormwood. Hold up, Beard. They're not even in your thumbnail. You weren't even talking about them at the beginning. What's going on? Technically, <laughs> technically they got reworked too, right? Very recently with the Reap What You Sow update. They were mini and they came during hotfixes. I was debating about talking about them in length, but I kind of already have. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not really going to bore you with that again. So my quick thoughts there are I like them. I like them both. The Wormwood one is nuts. It honestly makes me want to play Wormwood more and more and more. He might honestly become one of my top four, five, maybe even top three characters after that. The Wickabottom change had to happen eventually. Just kind of unfortunate that it happened so randomly. That's a whole thing that's still up for debate. But yeah, as far as those two character changes in 2020, take them. But now, folks, what about 2021 and beyond in relation to characters? What am I thinking? What's going to happen? I can't tell you what's going to happen, <laughs> but I can tell you what I'm thinking. Weber is going to get a rework. WX78 is going to get a rework. And Wolfgang and or Wickerbottom are going to get a rework. A rework, everyone. That's what I'm thinking. I do not think that we're going to get a new character this year. And quite frankly, that might just be me talking myself because I don't really want one. Sounds kind of strange. I get it. If they do one, be it a witch character. I want a witch character in this game, a magic user for Beat's sake, because magic needs a rework in this game. Speaking of reworks. But yeah, if they do a new character, be it a magic user. I'll love it. But other than that, again, Weber, definitely getting the rework this year. I'm thinking WX is probably going to be high on that list too. And then Wolfgang and Wiggerbottom. That's what I'm going with. But folks, that will do it for us for now. 2020 Don't Starve Together review in character style with the update style coming soon too. Don't know what I'm going to have that for you because, wow, even though we had three characters to talk about compared to seven characters a year ago, we have a crap ton... <laughs> of actual content updates to talk about compared to the four that we had last year. Yeah, it's going to be a lot, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Well wishes. Let me know how you feel about the characters released this year, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.